الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله as we've mentioned prior to this that having good companionship is an obligation in Islam that you should be around those people who encourage you to do good deeds and something that I want to mention which is really a new reality for us something uh, which we did not have to deal with in the past and that is the effects of social media in that now we have new communities and whole new worlds and realities and new ways to interact with people through social media through our phones through our computers our laptops our tablets all of our various devices that we can communicate with people around the world and we in fact make new community communities through things like YouTube things like uh, Facebook and Twitter and snapchat and Instagram and all these various programs that you begin to establish new communities so that brings about a whole new set of issues and it can be good and it can also be bad and spread evil so that's why it's imperative to choose righteous people to interact with that even in those social media settings and social media environments and in that social media world that you interact with people who bring good with you listen to those who bring benefit to you who bring something good to you and something good to the table and avoid evil listen to this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a very short hadith وَعَنَ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَلْعَنْهُ and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam قَالْ الرجل على دين خليله فلينظر أحدكم من يخالل رواه أبو داود وترمذي بإسناد الصحيح قال الترمذي حديث حسن so this was collected in Abu Dawood in Tirmidhi uh, with a sound chain of narrators and Imam Tirmidhi graded it as Hadith Hassan, as a Hassan Hadith. What we learn from this Hadith is that it's important to have righteous companionship and that you are like your companions. So if you have weak companions in Iman, birds of a feather flock together, so to speak. Now, of course, there's exceptions to this case. Maybe sometimes you are giving da'wah to people who are weak or who are not even Muslim, who don't even share the same faith and don't have Iman. So maybe you're sharing the message of Islam, or you're in their company and you're bringing good to them. But in general, the general principle, as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, that your general environment, meaning that that which you choose and that which is around you on a regular basis, you are on the religion of those you're around. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the Hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that a person is upon the religion of his companion. So look to those who you choose to make, uh, to take as companions. In this hadith, one of the benefits of this hadith is it shows that the servant must choose righteous people to be their companion, to be his or her companion, meaning their comrades, their friends, and who they surround themselves with, and in their social media environment, not to be a part of wicked groups, groups that spread wickedness around the earth. And that another benefit we gain from this hadith is it shows us that those we mix with, that they this mixing, it has an effect upon you and it has an effect upon the people you mix with. And it affects your manners and your ways of interaction. 
So that's why it's important to pick righteous companions. Because if you mix with people who speak vile and foul, you'll begin to speak vile and foul. You'll pick that up. Unless you are the one reforming them. So you're either reforming or being reformed. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us that a person can increase their iman through righteous companionship. Likewise, a person, their iman, can be weakened by choosing wicked companions. So this is why it's important to choose righteous companions. It actually has an effect on your iman. For example, if you uh, sit around people who backbite, then you're going to begin to backbite. And you're going to gain sin for listening to their backbiting. Especially if you did not command the good and forbid the evil by encouraging them to change the subject or not speak bad. Likewise, if you have companions, even though you're not a person who's into those things, but for example, you're a Muslim and you're around other Muslims or whoever you're around and they smoke weed, for example, or they drink. But you say, hey, I don't smoke, I don't drink. Well, you're witnessing this munkar, and you're witnessing it on a regular basis. You will either begin, it will affect, perhaps it'll affect you to where you want to try it. Or perhaps at least your heart will become hard to it, to where it just becomes acceptable. And that you're witnessing this sin, but you begin to accept it. And it becomes to become a regular habit. Likewise, if you have a friend that you uh, that you guys cooperate in evil and wickedness, that this of course also affects your iman. This will lessen your iman and perhaps can bring you to kufr. How many people do we know who were even adhering at one time to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I can think of two people I could name right off the get-go. In fact, I can think of a plethora of people from my generation who became Muslim, who didn't have righteous companions, and they left Islam, period. I know someone who was once Salafi, who used to come to the lectures we used to give in, in my city, and used to always ask about the ulama when I would come back. And he became Shia, Rafidi. Rafidi. Wa'iyadun billah. So he left the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to pure kufr. To curse in the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I also know of another individual who was under my tutelage, who was my companion, fresh out of the prison. We, tr we were close friends. I, he was in my home. I took, took, I employed him. When I left, came to Saudi Arabia, his companions. He went back to drugs. He went back to prison. He became a Shia, Rafidi. He left the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for Dalal, Dalal al -Mubin. So this shows us the importance of being our righteous companions. Even if you're weak, righteous companions can bring you to good. And a true story, my own experience, is that when I was going through my own struggles, but by living in Medina, having the Mashaykh as companions, meaning that they weren't necessarily my good friends that we hung out, no. But going to so many durus, going to Sheikh Ibrahim, Sheikh Suleiman, Sheikh Abdul Masin, Sheikh Ubaid, Sheikh whoever, the mini Mashaykh, I could go any night of the week. Uh, I want to go see Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi tonight. I think I'll just try to catch him after Maghrib. Oh, after Dhuhr, I know Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Suleiman prays in this masjid. I could go catch him. This helped my Iman when I went through different struggles in my life. When I felt weak in my Iman, by being in the company of the righteous, it boosts your Iman completely. And being in an environment of Talib al ilm that is the best environment. Me, I cannot think of a better environment, especially for your Iman. Being around those Tulab, carrying their books, going to the dars, uh, studying Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This, what is greater than that?
So be around good companions, choose righteous companions, and avoid wicked companions. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ilm and nafirus kan tayyibu amil al-muttaqabinu sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.